Have you ever wondered how salt is made? An everyday essential that seasons our meals, preserves our food, and even keeps our roads safe in icy conditions. But how often do we stop to contemplate the journey it undertakes before it reaches our tables? What's the secret behind its transformation from seawater or rock deposits into the white crystals we're so familiar with? These are questions that might have stirred your curiosity. Well, today, we unravel the mystery behind the creation of this essential mineral. Salt originates from two main sources, seawater and rock salt. Seawater, covering roughly 70% of our planet, is a vast, virtually inexhaustible source of salt. The ocean's salty brine, when subjected to the sun's heat, leaves behind salt crystals as the water evaporates. This process has been used by humans for thousands of years, harnessing the power of the sun and the sea to create a vital seasoning and preservative. On the other hand, we have rock salt, the mineral form of sodium chloride. This is found in vast deposits underground, remnants of dried up prehistoric seas. These deposits, sometimes hundreds of feet thick, are mined much like coal, extracted from the earth and brought to the surface for processing. Whether it's harvested from the sea or mined from the earth, the journey of salt is a fascinating one, and it doesn't stop here. Now let's dive into how these sources transform into the salt we use daily. Sea salt production, an age-old process, starts with the evaporation of seawater. This process, though simple, is an elegant dance of nature's forces, working together to create something we use every day. Let's begin by understanding the first step. The sea, a seemingly infinite source of salt, offers up its water to be collected in shallow ponds, also known as salt pans. These pans are often situated near the coastline, where the sea is just a stone's throw away. The water collected in these pans is left to the mercy of the sun and the wind, which play a crucial role in the production of sea salt. As the sun beats down on the pans, the water begins to heat up and the process of evaporation commences. This is where wind comes into the picture, aiding and accelerating the evaporation process. The water in the pans slowly starts to disappear, leaving behind a crust of salt. But this is not the end of the process, oh no. The salt that's left behind is still not ready for your kitchen table. It's in a raw, unrefined state, filled with minerals from the seawater. This raw salt is then harvested by workers who painstakingly scrape the salt from the pans using long-handled rakes. Once harvested, the salt is piled into heaps and left to dry further under the sun. This drying process helps to solidify the crystals and prepares them for the next phase of production. But what's interesting is that not all sea salt is the same. Depending on the location of the salt pans, the time of year, and even the weather conditions, sea salt can vary greatly in taste, texture, and color. This is why sea salt from different parts of the world is sought after by chefs and food enthusiasts alike. So the next time you sprinkle sea salt on your chips, remember the journey it has taken. From the depths of the sea, through the heat of the sun and the gusts of the wind, to the careful hands of the workers who harvest it. Isn't it amazing how nature works its magic to create sea salt? Rock salt, on the other hand, requires a little more human intervention. In contrast to sea salt, which is largely harvested through natural evaporation, rock salt demands a more hands-on approach. The process begins deep beneath the Earth's surface where vast deposits of rock salt are found. These deposits, often hundreds of feet below ground, are remnants of prehistoric oceans that have long since evaporated. To access these deposits, miners drill into the earth, creating a network of tunnels and chambers. This isn't a task for the faint of heart. Picture this, miners working in the dim light, the sound of drilling echoing through the cavernous spaces, and the constant awareness of the weight of the earth above. Once a sufficient area has been excavated, explosives are carefully placed within the drill holes. With a thunderous blast, the rock salt is dislodged from the surrounding earth. It's a sight to behold, but safety is paramount in these operations. Miners must evacuate the area before the detonation and return only when the dust has settled. In the aftermath of the explosion, what remains is a rubble of rock salt. Using heavy machinery, the miners collect this rubble and transport it to the surface. 
Here the rock salt undergoes a process of crushing and screening. This is where it is transformed from rough irregular chunks into the fine or coarse grains that we're familiar with in our kitchens. During this process, any impurities are also removed, resulting in a product that is ready for packaging and distribution. It's an arduous process, but one that is essential for our everyday lives. From seasoning our food to de-icing our roads, the rock salt mined from beneath our feet plays a crucial role in our world. And there you have it. From a subterranean journey to a place at our dining tables, the journey of rock salt is as fascinating as it is important. It's a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to harness the resources of our planet. Mining rock salt is indeed a fascinating process, wouldn't you agree? Whether it's sea salt or rock salt, the refining process is what makes it usable. The journey of salt from the briny depths or the heart of the earth to your kitchen table is a fascinating one. Once the salt is extracted, it must undergo a refining process to transform it into the clean, free-flowing substance we're familiar with. First up is washing. In this step, the salt is thoroughly rinsed to remove any impurities or foreign materials. This is a crucial stage as it ensures that the salt is clean and safe for consumption. Next, the salt is ground down. This process breaks the salt into smaller, more manageable pieces. And not just that, grinding also helps to standardize the grain size, giving us the consistency we're accustomed to when we sprinkle salt onto our food. Last but not least, additives are introduced. Now, don't be alarmed. These are harmless substances, usually anti-caking agents, added to prevent the salt from clumping together. This is what makes our salt free-flowing, ensuring it won't form lumps or harden over time. This refining process, though often overlooked, plays a pivotal role in our daily lives. It's what keeps our salt clean, safe and convenient to use. It's the unseen hero in our culinary adventures, making sure our meals are seasoned to perfection. The refining process ensures that the salt is safe and convenient for us to use. Once the salt is refined, it's ready for packaging and distribution. This stage of the salt journey is quite fascinating as it involves a series of precise and meticulous processes. It all starts with the packaging. Salt is often packed into different types of containers depending on its intended use. For instance, table salt might go into a shaker while larger quantities for cooking or industrial use could be packed into bags. Regardless of the container type, the goal is always to maintain the salt's purity and freshness. A machine called a filler does the job of getting the salt into these containers. It's a marvel of modern technology capable of filling hundreds, sometimes even thousands of containers in an hour. Once the containers are filled, they're sealed to ensure the salt stays fresh and free from contamination. From here, the packaged salt heads to the distribution phase. This involves transporting the salt from the packaging plants to various destinations around the world. The salt might be shipped to supermarkets, convenience stores, restaurants, or even directly to consumers. It could travel by truck, ship, or plane, depending on the distance it needs to cover. This vast network of distribution ensures that people everywhere can easily access this essential mineral. Whether you're in a bustling city or a remote village, chances are there's a packet of salt within your reach. And that's how salt travels from its source to your dining table. So, to recap, salt production is a fascinating journey. We've traversed the path from the humble origins of this essential mineral to its arrival in our homes. Let's take a swift trip back through the journey. We discovered that salt comes from two primary sources, the sea and the rock. Sea salt, as the name suggests, is extracted from our vast and salty oceans. It's a process that has been perfected over centuries, harnessing the power of the sun and wind to evaporate water and leave behind pure salt crystals. Next, we delved into the depths of the earth for rock salt mining. Contrary to its sea counterpart, this involves extracting salt deposits buried deep within the earth's crust. It's a testament to human ingenuity, showing how far we will go to source this vital ingredient. We then moved on to the refining process, where raw salt, whether from sea or rock, is transformed into the clean white grains we're familiar with. 
This stage is crucial, removing impurities and ensuring that what reaches our tables is safe and edible. Finally, we explored the packaging and distribution phase. It's a logistical marvel, ensuring that salt produced in specific locations is available worldwide in our local supermarkets or online stores. Next time you sprinkle salt on your food, remember the intricate process that made it possible. Fascinating, isn't it?